Mae'r rhaid i fi gyfaddau, wi wrth y modd yn siarad am Humphrey Davy, oherwydd ef oedd y cyntaf i mi glywed erioed fel un o gwyddonydd arbennig. A felly, mae'n yfrydwch mawr gen i, i ddweud chydigeiriau am y dyn arbennig hwn. What I said was, this gives me immense pleasure to talk about Humphrey Davy because he was the first scientist I'd ever heard of. Well, that paper was one of about five that he wrote in a very short period, as well as a book on the whole subject of trying to conquer the problem of explosions in coal mines. It's an incredible piece of work. I mean, beautifully written, with literary elegance, but the science behind it is so clever and so effective, you know, as a result of that breakthrough in which he showed how you could have a naked flame, as it were, suitably protected by a gauze and so forth, in the so-called Davy lamp, you could go into coal mines with greater safety. I mean, fire damp, which is methane, mm -hmm. often occurs in huge amounts in coal mines. And if you try and illuminate that with a naked lamp or a naked flame, it's disastrous. I mean, there's a huge explosion and uh, he, it, there was an appeal made to him. 93 people were killed, including children, because they worked underground, uh, around about 1814. And uh, the clergymen of uh, Gateshead and Northern England area were desperate to try and do something positive. And they hunted him down, and he went to the Royal Institution, had his young assistant, Michael Faraday, and carried out these experiments, and he solved the problem essentially in two weeks. And did he ever patent it? You mentioned he that. He refused to patent it, you know. He could have been a very rich man, but as he said, look, uh, I have enough uh, satisfaction in knowing that I was able to solve the problem mm -hmm. and that it was of service to mankind. It was very beautifully written. I quoted ver word for word in mm -hmm. the article what his response was when he was asked, why don't you patent it? And of course, many people copied it as a consequence, mm -hmm. you see, without any, any financial disadvantage. Now, I was overjoyed to be asked to write that article. I could have written an article on Faraday, who was also one of my idols, mm -hmm. but Davy is so exceptional. He was a poet, he's a man of action, he's an electrochemist, he introduced electrochemistry. He alone, is a man who only two others in the history of science come anywhere close to him in the number of elements in the periodic table that he discovered. He discovered sodium, potassium, calcium, strontium, barium, and established the, and boron, and established the elemental nature of chlorine. If you read any of his papers now, any of them now, you feel that you're in the presence of somebody who is imbued with all the arts. I mean, he, he spoke French and Italian. He'd learned some German. But he'd also learned Greek and Hebrew as a schoolboy. And he never went to university. You know, he was a remarkable man. Both Davy and Wordsworth look, liked looking at flowing water. They liked the bliss of solitude, which you could get in, in rural places, right? And I have felt a presence that disturbs me with the joy of elevated thoughts, a sense sublime of something far more deeply interfused, whose dwelling is the light of setting suns, the round ocean, the blue sky, the living air, and in the mind of man, a motion and a spirit that impels all th living things and rolls through all things. That is a poem which was written by Wordsworth, but Davy would associate himself with every single one of those pantheistic sentiments.